Yesterday, Arizona Senator Martha McSally delivered her final speech on the Senate floor, highlighting her work over the past two years. McSally, as you know, was appointed by Governor Doug Ducey to fill the late Senator John McCain's seat after he passed away. But that was months after losing a Senate race against Democrat Kirsten Sinema in 2018, and then eventually losing this year to try and hold that seat against Democrat Mark Kelly. McSally said she was honored to serve and grateful to have represented Arizona. It's been a true honor, Arizona. We are an extraordinary state with extraordinary people. I know our future is blessed and bright. I wish my successor, Mark Kelly, all the best as he represents our incredible state in this hallowed chamber. Senator-elect Mark Kelly will be sworn in once Arizona's election results are officially certified November 30th. So joining us right now to discuss his future is Senator-elect Mark Kelly. We thank you very much for joining us right now. Uh, we haven't spoken with you since you won. So first and foremost, congratulations. And now that it's set in, have you been able to take in that achievement? Well, a week ago Monday, I was in Washington, D.C. for orientation. And I had the opportunity to go onto the floor of the Senate and, uh, for the first time. And uh, that's when I really, I, I think it really started to, to set in that we were successful. And, but also the challenges that we face as a country, the issues of you know, healthcare and the economy, COVID-19, uh, climate issues, education, you start to really um, you know, think about the enormity of some of these challenges that we face. You are now part of the first duo of Arizona Democratic senators since 1953. Is there pressure to make sure you're not the last for another 67 years? Uh, no. I mean, I think the pressure is trying to solve some of these problems we face. We've got a rising COVID-19 infection rate in the state and across the country. We've got hundreds of thousands of ind individuals here in our state that are unemployed trying to get by on uh, $240 a week of unemployment income. I mean, there, there's incredible challenges that need to be addressed. And I think the only way we're going to be able to solve them if we come together, Democrats and Republicans, work across the aisle in a bipartisan way. Uh, I'll get to that in just a second because I have more questions regarding that. But uh, did it bug you that it took Senator McSally 10 days to concede? I know she called you. And what was that conversation like? Well, we had a nice conversation uh, about the transition. She even brought up that uh, we're on a short timeline here and she wants to be be helpful uh, because she realizes, I mean, it's, it's, it's up to the Senate to get to work. Uh, COVID-19 relief should have come, you know, months ago. Uh, the Senate has, uh, you know, failed to do that. And uh, it can't wait. I mean, I've, I've spoken to uh, individuals across our state that are just uh, in, in a really tough spot right now. And it's, it's up to the United States Congress to, to address these issues. And that being said, I know you should be sworn in sometime early December. You've talked about reaching across the aisle. In your orientation in meeting some of the other senators out there, did you realize uh, the difficulty at any point of how difficult it might be to reach across the aisle, especially to get the stimulus relief package done, which so many Arizonans need. Well, I enjoyed meeting my uh, classmates. They're in our new Senate class. There's seven individuals, three Democrats, four Republicans. And uh, it was great to have the opportunity to spend a couple days with them. I've also uh, started making phone calls to not only Democrats, but Republicans in the United States Senate to introduce myself and, and, and make it clear to them that, that hey, I am, um, you know, I am interested and I wanna work with them to try to solve some of these, these issues. I always think compromise is a good thing. And I think when we work together, we can, we can really solve some of these problems. If, uh, I, I often uh, worry that when one party uh, thinks that they can address some of these challenges that uh, we often just fall short. All right. So many challenges that and the coronavirus numbers here in the state. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. We thank you for taking the time. And we know once you get busy, uh, you might forget about us, but we'd love to have you whenever <laughs> you get a chance to come back and, and talk with us and update us on what's happening on Capitol Hill. Well, Javier, I'm not going to, I won't forget about you. I'll come on anytime. Um, I always enjoy uh, speaking with you. All right. 